All right, welcome to the vlog. Um, I am listening to the Kung Fu Genius podcast, uh, the episode where he interviews Matthew Polly. Uh, this is actually the second time I think Alex talked to Matthew Polly in podcasts. I think he recorded as Dudes of Kung Fu, but this is the Kung Fu Genius and it's a very, very recent. So I'll put the link for the YouTube and also he has it in podcast format. So this one is inspired by that. But actually, believe it or not, I'm not really going to talk about the, the topic of um, Matthew Polly and, and the Kung Fu Genius, I think. They just mentioned this one thing that I just love, this topic that I love, which is the purpose of a system. So I guess what I'm saying is the podcast inspired this conversation, but this is just very much a topic that I've talked about before, and I just want to emphasize it, right? Uh, the example is Bruce Lee, but I, even though I love Bruce Lee and everyone here knows I'm a big fan of Bruce Lee and a student of his life. Um, in this case, my point is not about Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee is just a very good example of this. I've seen these uh, problems with confusing the system for goals, or even not goal, but actual progress, actual development in most disciplines. It's just, to me, very patent in the martial arts. But it's very applicable in music in any skill that you're acquiring. In, it used to happen a lot in the meditation world or the uh, yeah, quote-unquote spiritual world. Very common too. So look, let's go back to my example, which is how I believe many of the martial arts developed not in the military, but in a time, and if I am just speaking on a particular example, there is examples of everything and there's arts that came from military and arts that came from whatever. I mean, I'm just thinking of this environment, probably Chinese, in which there were villages. You couldn't count on the law to protect you, your property, your family, and people had to maybe walk to another village and in the way they would get attacked by bandits. This is traditionally my example of what happened. And then some people managed to survive that situation better than others. And at the end of, towards the end of their lives, when they were older, people were like, how did you do it, man? And this person was like, well, let me think about it. And that would be the beginning of a system because this person would realize it's actually not trivial to now pass this thing I've been able to do. I don't even know how to to someone else, but I want to help them. Why not? They have families, they have property, they have to go to the next village. Police is nowhere to be found. What do we do to defend ourselves against bandits? So this person tries their best to create a system. But the point of the system, imagine that. Imagine that situation, imagine you lived in that situation in which you have to cross the two villages and randomly when you are crossing, you get attacked by bandits. Imagine that. And you've gone to someone who is renowned in your village for teaching you how to survive that situation. Today we call that fighting, but fighting could be so many things, right? Um, this is not even self-defense. This is, this is life protection. This is what I call life protection, right? Certainly not uh, sports fighting, which is a complete different discipline, or performance, which is a complete different. Think about the example I'm giving you. This is the martial arts I feel connected to, but there's martial arts for everything, and they're all equally good and legit. So, in that situation, that person gives you a system. Why? Because what do you do? Sit in front of the guy and the guy says, bing, I pass my skill to you. So this person comes out with the system, and the system is a little bit like if you were trying to learn music, they will give you a system. And there's many systems. You learn scales, learn this, learn that, whatever. There's a thousand systems and many systems have produced good people and many systems have produced mediocre people, right? But he comes, this guy, the old guy who survived and he could have been a woman too, comes up with this system, gives you the system. 
Now, suppose the system, in his experience, because he's trying to cater to the average student, has this, 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 and this. And suppose you were very bad at this, like you were attacked by bandits once and they beat you up and you didn't even touch one of them and like, holy moly, man. And then you start the system and something clicks. And you become a machine. You're like, oh, man. You know, something works. Something is in you and it wakes up. And you're training and training and training. But out of the system this person created, you've done just the beginning. Now, someone has completed the system or done much more of the system, but doesn't have that, right? Because it's just a system that helps you in developing a skill, but it was never the goal in itself. The goal is the development of skill. In the eyes of the old man, who would be more advanced? The person that has done the system, but when the bandits attack can't do anything, or the person that is now able to defend themselves when the bandits attack? Right? I don't have to answer, right? Therefore, what's the value of saying, oh, no, but he doesn't know the system? The system is the system for the development of skill. The goal is skill. In the spirituals, uh, in the spiritual centers, uh, groups, we used to tell the story, and maybe people know the story, and now I'm going to butcher it, so I'm sorry. But, you know, like this of the church, there was this island that was separated, and they had a guy running the, the whatever, the, the, the representing and so he was praying and praying, and he was alone. And so the, the church one day sent the guy and took the ship, went to the island and looked at it and said, man, you're praying wrong, your systems are wrong, you don't know what this is, man. And so here's the Lord's Prayer, here's how you have to do it by, and took the ship back. And as he was taking the ship back, he looks back and he hears shouting, and the guy is walking on water, saying, hey, man. I forgot, what was the Lord's Prayer like? I forgot, I'm not smart. And he's walking on water. And so the guy on the ship says, just continue doing what you're doing, man. You see what I mean? The system is very good in the sense that it can make us happy. I don't, I'm not against systems. I love the system that I have. But don't confuse that with the goal. What's the point of learning a system? The system is there to produce skill. Now, the skill is of your choice. Did you want to do sports fighting? Did you want to do self-defense? Did you want to do life protection? Different thing. Um, did you want to do historical uh, martial art connection, like the Hima people, understanding it's not practical today, but they want to be connected to their history and traditional martial art, whatever. I'm not saying one skill is better than another, but it's always a skill. It's always something you're trying to learn, right? And the system is very good in as much as it helps you do that. But what you're not going to do is judge a person by the system and forget that it, it existed for the skill. So why am I talking about this and what does it have to do with the Kung Fu Genius? Well, they talk about this famous thing. I've talked about this exact thing before. Look, when people criticize today Bruce Lee saying that he didn't have actual skill, and the Wing Chun people that criticize Bruce because he didn't complete the system. Remember, the system is meaningless. The system exists only in as much as it helps you learn the skill. It's one of the ways. You know, like climbing to the top of the mountain. There's many ways. And the system, which I love, um, has to be used for the goals. The system itself is not the goal. Development of skill is the goal. So... I am a fan of Bruce, so I am biased. But in this case, forget about it. If you don't disagree with Bruce, it doesn't matter. I'm just giving you an example of my point, which is that skill is the goal. So when he came to Seattle, 1959, Bruce had studied Wing Chun very, very little. And that is a source of continuous criticism on the part of Wing Chun people, right? And other Wing Chun people adore him. Cling. So, the point is this. Today, I don't know any martial arts teacher, any system, right? That demonstrated even a quarter of what Bruce Lee demonstrated in life. And all you have to do is study his life. You know, not only the, the actual fight with Gary Elms, the boxing, there is no martial arts today that would stand up to a boxer. 
Look for an example. In a boxing ring with boxing rules, you know, not even MMA would, as we have seen. Um, and Bruce Lee did it with a former champion boxer. Then Bruce Lee had the fight with against a Yoshi guy, Japanese guy in the school, and he had more, right? But even that, sweep that away. Just the way he came to Seattle, associated himself with James DeMille, Jesse Glover, Ed Hart, and others, and the way he impressed them, because remember, those guys were the antithesis of traditional martial arts, and way bigger than him, at least by 100 pounds, sometimes more, in the case of James DeMille, more. Tremendous background, you know, one was the boxing champion of the Air Force, James DeMille. Jesse was many times, I don't know, 14 times, a judo champion. And Ed Hart was a very famous street brawler and fighter. Um, they were badasses. James DeMille was on probation, right? He, 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 um, he could just lift, uh, he, he was in jail and he, they, badasses and gigantic, strong people. And Bruce, with every one of them, Capture their attention and their loyalty by proving his skills. Proving, no words. Those guys wouldn't have been so... So you have no idea what you're saying. If you think just by talk and demonstrations, those guys would have been impressed. In each case... In fact, they saw demonstration of Bruce and didn't believe anything. James DeMille tells the story. I, was see, I saw his demonstration and said, well, this is useless. And it's only when Bruce said, attack me, and proved his skill in dominating them. He didn't have to beat them up. You don't need a real fight to show your skill. When someone attacks you for real, dominate and show control. And he did that. There was no reason for those people to become, quote unquote, best friends and students of Bruce. For years and years associated to Bruce, following Bruce, becoming, changing their entire lives. Look at what Jesse Glover did out of that. Look at what James Amile became. Ed Hart to his last day. Ed Hart, it just makes me cry just to look at his life, called his stuff, which is the stuff that he learned from Bruce Lee that he had tweaked from his own fighting style. And he called it the stuff. And Ed loved with all of his heart. And he, to his last day, he taught it, he valued it, he cherished it. These people, I'm telling you one thing, man. I would be hard pressed to believe any martial arts, and of course, there gotta be exceptions. But most of renowned martial arts teachers today would not stand a chance against any of those guys, man. Bruce proved his... So then what's the point of saying he didn't complete the system? It worked, no? Produced skill. And the system is just an aid. What produces skill is your ownership. Your ownership in tr training and fighting and being obsessed with it and repeating and giving feedback. That's what produces skill. The system is a guideline to do that a way for you to have something to work on, you know? It's like Jimi Hendrix, Ima imagine Jimi Hendrix, you know, uh, gets lost for six hours. And the, the next morning, the people in the studio have to say, man, Jimmy, you haven't even gone to, sl to sleep. And someone says, well, Jimmy wasn't good. He put the, he, his hand position wasn't appropriate. All of that exists in as much as it helps the development of skill. If skill is there, the goal is there. So don't judge people based on systems. And don't assume for them where their goals are. If the skill, the skill can just be, hey, I want to be a kata champion and do kata in competition. That is a very legit thing. And it gives me a goal and it gives me something to work for and it gives me something that I can compare myself and it gives me, therefore, the chance to truly develop myself. Don't judge people based on goals. But above all, don't judge people based on systems. Be safe.